Hey everyone, Scott here to discuss The Imitation Game, starring Benedict Cumberbatch, Kira Knightley, Matthew Good, Rory Kinnear, Alan Leach, Matthew Beard, Charles Dance, and Mark Strong, directed by Morton Tildum. I, I don't know if I said that right, please forgive me. Now before I, no, I have seen this movie before, and it's been a while since I've seen it myself. I haven't seen it since maybe I first got the Blu-ray, but I don't know if it'll last long. Let's see why in this show. We open with the mathematician Alan Turing, played by Benedict Cumberbatch, being investigated by police detective Robert Nock, played by Rory Kinnear, in Manchester, England, in the year 1951, being investigated by the MI6, which is the spy station in England, while Detective Nock investigates Alan's break-in, and he's led to believe he won't be he won't find the robber, and asks Nock to another office and another officer to leave him alone and it is a great performance by Cumberbatch as we move on to London as the war was starting with Germany in 1939 and Alan goes to an interview with Commander Denniston played by Charles Dance from the Royal Navy as he is the age of 27 and I didn't I'm going to be brutally honest and say I didn't believe Cumberbatch is a 27 year old I would say like late 30s early 40s around there and he says during the interview he's going to he's good at crossword puzzles and brings up Enigma and the cinematography looks pretty good as this is a pretty good looking movie. And I gotta be honest to say, I don't know if I like Alan as a main character either. Deniston briefs Alan as well as the commander of Enigma, Hugh Alexander, played by Matthew Good, as well as well, they're gonna be as he'll be hiring John Cairncross and Peter Hilton, played by Matthew Beard, later in the film, and others, as well as an MI6 agent, Stuart Menzies, played by Mark Strong, getting briefs by Deniston about how Enigma works, and the men get to work while Alan wants his own office, and I honestly don't think I like these characters either, and they come off rather harsh. For example, they ask Alan if he wants to go to lunch with the other guys while mocking Alan about getting some soup. And the dialogue written for this movie did win the Oscar, but did it deserve it? Probably yes or no. As it is a good written, but in a way, I don't like how it's written. And Alan gets complaints about his genius as he believes they're all idiots. And he asks for 100,000 pounds, which means dollars in England, to build a machine to make an enigma and alan delivers a letter to winston churchill about being in charge of enigma and we hear how he was bullied in school because he's different from the other kids like he doesn't deserve like like he doesn't like food touching each other want one another at while his his friend christopher comes in and helps him as we go back and forth with the flashback and it was bothering me to the point i was like Let's get back to the movie and let it make its point. And we get back to the movie and Ellen gets more staff after firing a couple of employees that I shall remain name nameless who are cruel to Alan as he works on a crossword puzzles and he creates an interview to students to solve a crossword puzzle under six minutes. And Joan Clark, played by Kira Knightley, enters the room a few minutes late and grabs a chair to solve the puzzle as she solves it in five minutes and 34 seconds which is less than six minutes, and gets hired. And I like Kira Knightley's character, but the performance was a little bit flat. We go back to Alan as a kid with Christopher, as they have a good friendship, and we move on to the 1940s, and Joan doesn't believe she's the right choice to work with Enigma, and she doesn't believe so as Alan goes to her house and convinces her to work on Enigma, and he talks her into it, and she comes in with a bunch of women as she's requested, and the guys are pissed about not solving a damn thing at midnight, at their work is useless while Alan is building the Enigma machine, and Hugh is pissed at him about it, and Peter talks with Alan, and suddenly walks away, and the story is fine, but in my opinion, a little flat. Alan comes in to Joan's place to show her something about decrypted messages, and next day comes... And Alan learns there's a spy on their team, as Deniston is led to believe that Alan is the spy. And why is that? Because Deniston doesn't like him, which doesn't make much sense. As Joan comes in to take Alan to a bar, 
and sees his team coming in and she tells him to do something nice for the guys in his team. While Hugh looked like he had a crush on Joan and the next day Alan comes in with some apples as we go back to the unnecessary flashback. We get to Alan and Joan on a picnic as Hugh comes in and shows Alan something while eating a sandwich that was Alan's because Alan says er, said earlier he doesn't like sandwiches. And they test the Enigma machine, a.k.a. Christopher, as that's what he's calling it, out. And they try from code to code until someone tells Dennis Den about how unsuccessful the machine is and brings him to some military men to turn off the machine and almost fires Alan and, until Hugh and the others come in and spy and they fire Alan they would have if they have to fire Alan they will have to fire them and give us more time as Deniston gives them one month to see if <coughs> excuse me the machine solves the case of winning the war as they go to the a bar and Deniston comes off rather jerkish and we move forward to Detective Knock, and this movie goes back and forth quite a bit as in a way that was confusing me for half the movie. Joan comes to Alan's place and says she's leaving until Alan proposes a hand of marriage to her, and they celebrate their engagement, and we learn Alan is a homosexual. And why is he marrying Joan is beyond me, and it's illegal for them to get married. And by that, by they, I mean Alan and Joan, and we go back to Alan back at school as he doesn't see Christopher at school grounds hour ever again. And we move forward to Alan and Detective Knock interrogating Alan as he talks about thinking differently. And at the end of the of it, they play a game of the judge and jury. And I was getting confused as this movie is starting to get dry for me. We move back to the guys as it was another unsuccessful day. And they go to a bar with Joan and Helen as Hugh is introduced to Helen and they have a drink and Alan learns Helen had something to do with the German and the encrypted code and comes up with some letters and Alan runs back to Christopher and puts in a code of a message that ends up breaking Enigma with the encrypted code and that's what wins England the war against Germany and that's a miracle of some kind while I'm finding the movie rather dry at this point Hugh wants to tell Deniston about how breaking Enigma after sucker punching Alan. He realizes there will be no more secret messages to break, as they'll know how they broke Enigma. And Peter is afraid of for his brother getting killed, but they unfortunately don't have a choice, and they take a train back to London and talk to Stuart about how nobody should know about Alan breaking Enigma. Uh, because the Germans will be suspicious of something about Enigma, and Peter is pissed at Alan at this point. He shoves him. And we learn John is the Soviet spy, and he blackmails Alan about his homosexuality. And Stuart comes to Alan's house, and Alan tells Stuart it's John who's the Soviet spy, as Stuart knew the whole damn time as he was hired by Stuart, and this reveal was just unconvincing, in my opinion. Alan tells Joan it's not safe anymore as he has no choice but to call off the engagement by telling her he's a homosexual. And she says she has her suspicions and she cares for him. And he care and he says he never cared for her. And she slaps him and sh says she's he's a monster in which admittedly he was acting like one. And Alan starts to get depressed because the enigma has changed him. And England does win the war and Stuart says to burn every evidence of the war as we they were told from this from the beginning of the war and we go back to the game of judge and jury and alan asks detective knock is judging him and he doesn't know as he's been no help to alan whatsoever and we go back to alan in school and he learns christopher is dead while on a holiday because he had tuberculosis and he silently cries about it and even after the war, as he was sentenced to jail or hormonal therapy, as he picks the hormonal therapy and gets a visit from Joan as Alan is twitching and depressed, and he's hysterical in not a funny way, but like a loud way. And he learns Joan is engaged to another man and it depresses him. And because this is a biopic, Alan committed suicide in the year 1954 and Queen Elizabeth II has granted the posthumous royal pardon of honoring Alan Turing for his achievements during the war. And this climax was absolutely dry and depressing as hell. And at the same time, I don't feel bad for the guy. I just 
feel pity for him, as this movie was kind of flat. Now it's time for my rating. I'll give this movie a 4.8 out of 10. I do like the performance for by Benedict Cumberbatch and Kira Knightley. Well, but I don't know. Her character came off a little flat, and I I don't like these characters as the screenplay that was written for the movie doesn't deserve the Oscar trophy as the way it was written. The story is fine but flat in my opinion as it was told in an interesting way and the cinematography is pretty good as this is a pretty good looking movie but the flashbacks were unnecessary and going back and forth is unnecessary in my opinion as the movie goes back and forth to the point that it confused the hell out of me the movie is confusing halfway through and it was rather dry and not great and unfortunately i have to give this the mildest of non-recommendations as i have to to as it was well told, but at the end of the day, it was kind of a bad movie about Alan Turing winning the war against Germany, and it was unfortunately not my favorite, as some of it was kind of flat. So I'd like to thank you guys for joining me for this review, and until then, Alan Turing broke Enigma.